You know that a happy love life is something intentional, not accidental. It's common for people to think that those who are happy in their love life are lucky. Oh, look, what a beautiful couple and such. So people think it's luck. Look at him. He's rich. She is beautiful. He is that. She is that. The two of them were just lucky. And the person gets a certain envy thinking that life was unfair to them because they did not get lucky in their love life. You see, this reasoning is so flawed that they attribute success in love life to beauty, to money, to power, and to fame. But they can't support this argument. Because all you have to do is look at any famous person. They are the messiest regarding their love life. They have beauty, money, fame, and most of them can't be happy. Just can't be happy in their love life. So, a blessed love life is not something accidental. It's not the result of luck. It is not the result of your genes. Oh, you were born with this gene, with that. People say your genes favored you. Oh, your family, you came from a good family. No, it has nothing to do with it. There are many people who came from a good family and are unhappy in their love life. Therefore, what have we learned both in our life and dealing with people, married, single, divorced, people in this Happiness in love life is built. It is a construction, which means work. It does not come ready. And you have to commit yourself. You have to have the willingness to do the work continuously, like whoever builds a building. All types of construction are dirty, hard. If you've done any construction work or if you've seen a construction near your neighborhood, you know that it raises dust, it's dirty, makes noise. So, it's something, let's say, difficult. But when it's ready, everybody says, oh, what a beautiful home, what a beautiful building, it's beautiful. But before it became beautiful, it was ugly, it was hard. So, love life is like this. And if people don't have this awareness, if you don't start from this principle, that it's construction, it's not by accident, it's not luck, then you will be frustrated. Because you'll think, it's a matter of luck. You were lucky or you were unlucky. You'll hope that one day, you will run into your loved one your soulmate. You'll hope that one day your husband will change. Your marriage will change. You will hope that time will make things change, will make your spouse acknowledge mistakes, etc. Then, you will stand idly waiting on God, waiting on life, on the world, on luck, and this will never happen. Each and every day, you will get more frustrated, more tired, and you know what will happen? you will give up on love. You'll say like this, oh, this love thing is not for me. This love thing, you know, I think I, I wasn't born for love. I think it doesn't work. Men are all the same. Women are all the same. Men only want this. Women only want that. Men only want this. Men only want that. You're going to believe in guessworks, in your own love life myths, and you will live by them. You'll live in your own little world of lies that you have built for yourself a world of unhappiness in your love life. So, this is a primary principle, and it's why we're going to explain for you here today. Yeah, and people need to understand that what you want, what you want in your love life, you can have it, yes. Contrary to what many people say, right? Many people say that love doesn't exist, that if you already went through many relationships, failed relationships, you don't have a chance. No, you do have a chance, yes. 
If you're here today and you believe, you're going to be happy in love. This is a fact when a person believes. But it's not just to believe. When we believe, we work on that. We, we saw the results of that faith. And it's not something like one plus one, two. If it was like that, that easy, that simple, we wouldn't need the love therapy. But the lo love, our love life is not like that. It's, there isn't a formula that you receive and you take it and then the problem is resolved. It takes work. You have to rebuild it, to, con to construct it. You have to understand you're changing the way that you look at yourself, the way that you understand, understand what you need to have a happy love life. So it's a process. That's why we have the love therapy. So I wanted you to know at what stage of this construction you are. And understand why you have to put the love therapy in your life put the love therapy on your schedule make it your weekly routine every thursday and why is that for your own sake not for our sake thank god we will complete 30 years of marriage now in 2021 look how we're still young Thirty years of marriage because a good marriage rejuvenates you. Now you who are spending a lot of money on creams, plastic surgeries and other things, you should invest more in your marriage, in your love life. Because when you are loved, when you are well, well loved, the life, well, it seems that life treats you better, treats you well. And, and time doesn't go hard on you, on your wrinkles. Because you rejuvenate, you grow in spirit, so both of you are one. So we learned, we racked our brains. We wanted to know this back there in the first 12 years of our marriage, when we were racking our brains, we wanted to have these teachings that you are having today, because we would have avoided a lot of things. Thank God we've learned the hardest way, but we did. Today, we work to share with you what took us years to learn. You know, when you appreciate the value of learning, the value of a word, of a teaching, you know that a teaching, just one teaching, without saying 10, 20, or 30, several hundreds of lessons, only one. One teaching can save you years of your life. Save you from lost years and mistakes from racking your brains here. A teaching can solve your problem overnight. But you have to appreciate. The Bible says that we must acquire knowledge with everything we have. Everything we have we must exchange for knowledge. All our wealth must be invested in knowledge because when you learn, you become wealthy. Knowledge is the greatest wealth you can have that never ends because once inside, nobody steals it from you. This wealth, nobody steals. Therefore, why should you do the love therapy and include the love therapy in your life, in your daily routine, for you to build your love life. Let's look at what is the love therapy. We're going to summarize the love therapy in four parts. The first part of the love therapy is that it helps to rebuild a person. It rebuilds yourself. The first step of every happy relationship is the reconstruction of a person's self. The person is reprogrammed, rebuilt from the inside out. And why is that necessary? Because before you solve a marriage problem, a relationship problem, you have to solve yourself first. 
because relationship problems do not exist. What exists are two problematic people desperately trying to change one another. What did you say? This is what happens when people call marriage problems or relationship problems. Actually, it's just two people full of inner problems that do not acknowledge their own problems, do not strive to change their own problems, but see many problems in one another. And they keep on insisting in changing the other person. And this generates conflict. So the first thing that has to happen for that person to have a happy love life is to rebuild yourself. Out of the four steps that we're going to show you here, this is the main step. Whether you're married, single, divorced, widowed, it doesn't matter. The reconstruction of yourself. You rebuild as a person is the main attitude you ought to have to build your love life, your happiness in love life. So, rebuilding of oneself. I had, for example, to take out of me old things. I had to take out of me wrong teachings that I've reaped, I've inherited from my parents, especially from my father. My father was a failure in his love life. He had no father, so he didn't know how to be a husband. He didn't know how to be a father. He tried the best way the world had taught him. Failed. When I saw my father as a husband, as a man, he had many strengths. He has many strengths. He worked hard. He dedicated a responsible person. He tried to do everything that nothing would lack for his family. But he couldn't be faithful to my mother. He cheated several times. He didn't know how to deal with my mother and his differences. It created a tense atmosphere inside the house because he didn't know how to talk. So as not to fight, he would shut up. He would shut up for days and weeks. He spent almost a year not talking to my mother inside the same house. I had no idea how much that had impacted me. I hadn't. I have just came to discover how much that impacted me when I married Christiane and I became a replica of my father. Even though having hated what he did to my mom, seeing that I always stayed on my mother's side, I felt pity for her. But what I did to Christiane, I did exactly what my father had done to my mother. For my marriage to be transformed, First, I had to rebuild myself. I had to deconstruct myself first. Deconstruct, which means what? Breaking the old Renato into pieces. I had to acknowledge what was bad inside me. And I had to start to rebuild myself as another man. I had to go through this process to be who I am today, to be the husband that I am today. And if that hadn't happened, it wouldn't matter the amount of love for Christiane on her, for me. It wouldn't matter the fact that I was a pastor. It wouldn't that I was working when we had our problems. I was already a pastor. It wouldn't matter how much I knew the Bible. I had to break myself. I had to be broken, grounded, and rebuilt. And had to acknowledge this, humiliate myself, seek, strive, sacrifice, go to the altar. And we teach you to go to the altar. What we teach you is what we lived that changed our lives. And thank God, I managed to kill that old man and rebuild a new person. I'm not perfect. We are all work in progress. And we are improving every day. But this was the first step of changing our marriage. Yeah, and you didn't cheat on me like your dad would cheat on your wife. But you gave me that silent treatment, and he was proud, just like his dad. In my case, I had a, be a wrong belief about myself. And, and that rebuilding of yourself also deals with that, with um, our, our inside, the way that we look at ourselves. 
I had a belief about myself um, after I got married and I saw somebody came to me and said that I wasn't I wasn't to the level of Renato I wasn't at his level that he was more this more that than me and I I was very young I I did, didn't see that as as the devil using that person I believed I said I am enough from there I got married and I felt inferior insecure and I was always wanting him to give me more attention that he would tell me that for him to tell me that he loved me to make me feel better about myself so it was you know that way that he was with my insecurity that came together and we had so many problems because of that so that belief that in me was deep deep down I, I used to come to church I already had the Holy Spirit I helped people I prayed for people I didn't know that I thought like that about myself that that's the thing about rebuilding right because many times you have a problem and you think that that problem is the other person like I used to think I used to think that Renato is what makes me feel jealous Renato is the one that makes me feel needy Renato 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 but the problem was in me the way I looked at myself so that rebuilding that happened inside of me it changed the way I looked at myself that's why you when you said one word one word sometimes changes your life and it's what happened with me when the coin dropped it, it, it was over so the rebuilding of yourself it does that it goes deep down inside of you it's not just what you what you you know your habits the bad references that you've had but it's also the things you think about yourself that hinder your decisions your daily decision so this is the first step rebuilding yourself that will happen during the meetings when you come to participate of the love therapy the other stage is building a relationship other role of the love therapy that is to help you build a relationship build what does not exist especially you who are single divorced you who are alone today or you're dating you are in the first steps of building a relationship so you need to see how to build the last thing you want is to spend all your money on constructing a building put the roof the windows the doors paint do all the finishing and discover there is a defect in the columns the person who made the columns the engineer who worked on the columns didn't put enough concrete the way he should now the whole building is compromised which means all spent there worth nothing you'll have to go back spend more money and maybe even tear down everything you built so what we see today is that many people are not knowing how to build a relationship they are entering into a relationship without knowing what they're doing they get together they go live together or get married etc suddenly when married sometimes on their honeymoon they already have serious problems they're already saying this is not what i imagined i didn't know you were like this but you didn't say this when we were dating oh you didn't ask did you people don't know how to build a relationship so they go in an abrupt way fast putting things on top of each other and when they are married with children they look to the side and say where's my husband where's my wife where's my family there's none 
But they thought they were building a relationship. For this exact reason, the love therapy teaches people to build a relationship solidly. A relationship from the foundation. The most important part of any construction is the foundation. You have to build it right. When you build well from the beginning, things flow naturally. It's awful when you have to go back there. It's awful when you see a couple who says like this. We already had problems from the beginning. Since the beginning, we started everything wrong. Well, is it possible to fix? Yes, but it's better. You who are starting now, start the right way without having to fix anything. That's why it's very important that you who are single, you have to value the love therapy for you to have this guidance. What do I do to get to know someone? What kind of person is this? Is it enough just to love? Does age matter or not? Does profession matter or not? Does being from the church matter or not? From this church, from the other church, from this church denomination to the other denomination, matters or not? How do we behave? What do I need to find out while dating? What do I have to know while dating? What do I have to ask? How do I act? How do I know this person I'm dating is to get married and not only to break up and say bye. It's a good while it lasted and get another one. All of these questions you'll learn. You'll be learning throughout the love therapy and how to find that person. That is the big, the big question. Here also comes the faith because God does not, He doesn't make people appear in front of you, but He leads you to that person. He makes your path cross. The problem is that many people cross in their way, but they don't see, they don't look. There are people who are so blind that if they stumble over the love of their life, they will curse. You are that, you are this, don't you look out where you're stepping. So blind that they are. Right? But when you are aligned with the faith, God shows you. God guides you to that person. So this is one of the things you will learn. Therefore, the importance of the love therapy. The other step is for those who are in a relationship, married, and now, well, they aren't, they haven't gone through the previous stage, and now they need to rebuild. Rebuild your marriage. What is what happens to many who arrive here? They have already gone through betrayals, lies, distrust. I don't know if I believe anymore. I'm insecure. He's already cheated on me. She's already cheated on me two, three times. Won't let me see the phone. The other day, she saw his phone. We can't agree on anything. Money, children, and the son of another relationship. His mother, his father. A lot of problems that overload the marriage until this person sometimes starts to think, I don't think there's a way out. I can't take it anymore. The person starts looking for the exit door. You know when you're in a place, you want to leave, and you start looking for the exit sign. Don't look back now, please. You start looking for the exit sign because you want to leave. You can't wait to get out of there. That's how many people are inside marriage. Looking for the exit. How am I going to get out of this? How am I going to get out of this? Looking for an excuse to get out. It's not the exit that will solve your problem. You think that if you leave this marriage because it's bad and be alone for a while and then enter into another one with a different person will solve your problem? What will happen? is that you will leave a problem and enter another. And worse, you couldn't solve the first one, so you don't know how to solve marriage problems. You enter into another one with new problems, you won't know how to solve those problems, and the history will repeat itself. That's why people get married two, three, four, five times, thinking that the next person is going to be the right one. Yeah, and we know that... Trusting is something that can be rebuilt. Many people say no. Once the person is cheated on, then that's all. There's no more trust. There's no more relationship. But trust can be rebuilt. 
love can be renewed. We've seen it happen many times. Marriages that maybe even one didn't even like the other one. One of them didn't like the other one, but God, he rebuilds, mar rebuilds marriages. But there has to be faith. You have to believe. And this is something that you are able to do here. Because many times you can even say, yeah, it's true. I've seen testimonies about this and all. But you by yourself, rebuilding, you by yourself in your house, trying with your own strength by yourself, sometimes it's too much for you. The love therapy also helps with this, with giving you, you know, that boost, that boost that you need. So every week when you're hearing about this topic, when you're praying about it, fighting for it, remember, reminding God, I'm here fighting for this. Remember me. Remember this fight that I'm going through. You're not going to be by yourself in this fight, which is to re build a marriage and the last stage so we have rebuilding yourself the building a relationship for those who are single get to know someone get married rebuilding a marriage for those who are in relationship and want to recover it and the last is maintenance and growth of a relationship maintenance and growth seems obvious but we hardly remember that everything to be kept in good condition needs maintenance. You need to wash your clothes because it won't do you any good if it's unclean. You need to clean your house. You need to go to the doctor, go for a checkup, do tests. You need to change the oil in your car. Sometimes you have to delete some things from your phone, otherwise it crashes. Or maybe you have to exchange it. Everything needs maintenance. Marriage is not a static thing as a phone, a car, a house. Although those things, these are not living things. They're static, but they still need maintenance. Imagine a marriage where two very different people are trying to live their life together and always changing. All the time, changing. You are not the same person of five years ago. You are not the same person of ten years ago. Five years from now, ten years, you won't be the same person. Because age and maturity that we acquire over time brings us other perspectives, uh, different thoughts, other thoughts, other goals, things that we cared so much back then when we were 20. Now, I don't care so much. Now it's... It's not important. How many couples that were fine? But you must have heard a couple talking like this. And we were fine. Suddenly, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know what happened to her. All of a sudden, she said she was fine. And suddenly, she said she doesn't like me. And she doesn't love me anymore. Suddenly, I found out that she's cheating on me. But he was never that kind. It was all of a sudden. Nobody suddenly destroys their marriage. Marriage is gradually being destroyed right under their nose. The fact is, because you were not paying attention, you didn't know that your marriage needs attention and maintenance, you were focused on work, focused on your children, you were focused on other things, mommy, daddy, brothers, relatives. You were focused on other things, college, money, and you forgot about your spouse. When you looked, you already two strangers in the same house. Which means, there is no maintenance. There is no monitoring, growth of a couple. So, I'll tell you a tip, a tip for you. Marriage is not supposed to get boring with time. Marriage is not supposed to get worse with time. Quite the contrary. When a couple is doing the right thing, time will only make them closer together, much similar to each other. Time will only make them both more and more loved and loving to one another, together and depending on each other. You no longer see yourself without that person. That person becomes 
as important to you as an arm or a leg that you can't imagine yourself without when you're doing the right things. When you grow and join together, becoming one flesh, as the word says. But when you are not doing the right thing, then it's customary or time to do this in marriage because it lacks maintenance. So, I would say that this fourth function of the love therapy here is the least used by couples. It's least used. Because usually the person gets here broken, needing to rebuild themselves, or looking for a relationship to build, find a person, or rebuild a marriage. Then they, when they are well, when the couple is well, they think, oh, I don't need this anymore. Well, the love therapy has helped us. We're fine, wonderful, thank you. They go to the love school show, give testimonies, saying it did great blessings, a lot. You must go to, then they stop coming. Stop investing in their love life. In a little while, you discover that the couple who gave testimony, that gave, sorry, the couple who was well, suddenly is now separated. Why are they separated? Because they got too comfortable. They relaxed. They thought they would be fine forever with no effort. Yeah, and it's very common, this about you know, human beings, thinking that things are going to go. Things are going to go on. We already learned the intelligent love, so now, you know, just autopilot. And it's not like that. Faith is not like that. Life with God is not like that. You see that even our relationship with God is not like that. We need to maintain it every day. Just autopilot. People who do this with their faith, they are people who are cold. People who many times, many times they're not even of God anymore and they think they are. They don't even have a life with God anymore and they think they do. So everything in life, everything, there has to be maintenance, including your love life. You who are single, you're okay. You know, you're okay. You, you're in faith. God is preparing that person for you. You're in that faith. You have to maintain that faith. That faith is not going to be there tomorrow and the day after the same way. There are days that you're going to um, you're going to have doubts. Doubts are going to come and say, is it, you know, is, is it really that God is hearing you? Is it really that God saw your sacrifice? Is it really that it's going to happen? You know, time is going by. So, meaning you have to maintain that faith every single day. So it's not just for those who are in a relationship. It's for those who are single as well to maintain that faith. So place yourself. At what stage are you in? What do you need to do the love therapy for at this moment? 